August 24th, 2006. The day that will live in infamy. The day that left millions of people brokenhearted. The day that Pluto got demoted. Welcome back to Space According to Skylar. I'm Skylar, I'm an astrophysics PhD student, and today we are going to talk about why Pluto is no longer a planet. As I mentioned, Pluto has been considered a dwarf planet since 2006. In August of 2006, the International Astronomical Union met. One of the many things on their agenda was to discuss the discovery of new objects at the outer reaches of our solar system. In the early 2000s, we saw a ton of new trans-Neptunian objects being discovered. One of the most important discoveries was the object Eris, which was thought at the time to be larger than Pluto. With the discovery of these new objects, they realized that somebody had to decide whether or not these things would be called planets. The problem was, there wasn't really a good definition of what constituted a planet at the time. So the International Astronomical Union decided to come up with one. To be considered a planet, an object has to meet three criteria. One, be in orbit around the sun. Makes sense. Two, be roughly spherical in shape. Only very large objects can be roughly spherical in shape because their self-gravity levels out the surface. Compare the Earth to some of the asteroids. And three, to be considered a planet, an object has to have cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. It has to have gravitational control. With this new definition of a planet, they also came up with a new category, dwarf planets. Dwarf planets meet the first two criteria, but not the third meaning Pluto and Eris and several of the large asteroids in the asteroid belt would now be considered dwarf planets. One of the reasons cited for changing the definition this way was trying to limit the number of planets. Because if Pluto was kept a planet, then Eris would have to be a planet, Ceres would come back as a planet, pretty much everything that is now considered a dwarf planet in the solar system would now be considered a planet. And we are still discovering new objects in the solar system, leading some people to estimate that there are hundreds of dwarf planets out there. Here's the thing, this decision was highly controversial, and not just for the public. When the IAU decided to redefine a planet, only about 5% of their members actually participated in the vote. And a lot of the people who did vote were not planetary scientists. So while members of the public were mourning and trying to figure out a new acronym for the now eight planets of the solar system, planetary scientists were engaged in pretty strong debate, including things like circulating petitions to give Pluto back its planetary status. A big part of the controversy came from the wishy-washiness of the definition. What does it mean for something to have cleared the neighborhood of its orbit? Earth has a moon, does that count? Well, no, a planet has cleared the neighborhood of its orbit of things besides satellites. Okay, but then what about something like Jupiter? Jupiter has these objects called the Trojan asteroids. These are objects that are in Jupiter's orbit, and they travel around the sun gravitationally locked with Jupiter. Or what about Neptune? Because Pluto's orbit actually brings it across the orbit of Neptune. So does that mean that Neptune hasn't gravitationally cleared its orbit because Pluto crosses it? These were some of the concerns that a lot of planetary astronomers had, but the definition never ended up changing. Here's the thing about all of this controversy. This was actually not the first time something like this happened. Pluto was not the first planet that we lost. In 1801, Ceres was discovered. It was a large object in between Mars and Jupiter and was initially considered to be a planet. At this time, not even Neptune had been discovered yet. So the solar system consisted of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Ceres, Saturn, Jupiter, and Uranus. However, in the 1850s, astronomers began to discover more and more objects around the region of Ceres. Unlike all of the other planets discovered at that point, who had a relatively empty orbit besides maybe a couple of moons, Ceres was in a rather jam-packed region of the solar system. So by the late 1850s, it was decided that Ceres would be demoted to an asteroid, and it would become the largest object in the region we now know of as the asteroid belt. 
So what happened to Ceres in the 1800s is essentially what happened to Pluto in the early 2000s. More objects were found out in its region. Just like we discovered more objects out by Ceres and created the asteroid belt, when we found more objects out by Pluto, we created a region called the Kuiper Belt. Very similar to the asteroid belt, just further out in the solar system. So with all of this, I just want to end with the consideration of does this really matter? A lot of people had some unknown emotional attachment to Pluto that they discovered only when it became demoted. But has the science that we've done with Pluto actually changed since we started calling it a dwarf planet? Before it was demoted, Pluto was a very understudied planet because it's so far away. It wasn't until early 2006 that the first mission to actually go near Pluto was launched. This mission was New Horizons, which took its images of Pluto, like this famous one showing the heart, in 2015. While there haven't been any other spacecraft slated to go past Pluto, there's still a ton of research being done with it. JWST has looked at Pluto and its moon Charon in the past week. There are over 11,000 results when you search Pluto on NASA's scientific paper archive. <laughs> Even though it's considered a dwarf planet, there are still people who devote their whole career to studying Pluto and its moons. The label doesn't matter that much. Planet, dwarf planet, whatever you want to call it, Pluto is still much loved. Hopefully this heals a little bit of the sadness you had when you first found out that it would no longer be a planet. And if you still need help remembering the names of the eight planets of the solar system, might I offer the mnemonic created by Mike Brown, one of the astronomers who discovered Eris, which of course led to the demotion of Pluto. Mean, very evil men just shortened up nature. <laughs> all right, that's all I got, folks. Let me know how you feel about Pluto, if you think the new definition of a planet is a good one or not. Subscribe, share, comment, like, you know, do all the YouTube things, and I'll see you next time.